but I'm very interested in the ancient ideas that were found everywhere, right? Whether they were, you know, found in the West, in the East, all over the world. And it's very interesting to me, the connections. And there's, there's a verse in the Bible. There's a passage in Matthew, I think. I've been very interested in I've, I've never been more interested in the Bible than now. And I'm not even a Christian or anything. I'm so interested in the connections. Yeah. There's, this, there's this passage where it's talking about uh, if, if God would clothe the grass of the field today, which is thrown into the kiln tomorrow, wouldn't he so too? Uh, w- I can't remember what it was. It, wouldn't he also clothe you, a ye of little faith? It's basically saying if whatever it is, the logos is going to take care of the animals and the trees and they have everything that they need and they have, and they never have to worry about anything. They simply do what they do. Then doesn't it make sense that you would also be taken care of if you focus on the bare essentials. And for me, that has been the process lately of trying to figure out, because I think that that actually aligns perfectly with the stoic idea of aligning with nature uh, in that, if you focus on what's important and if you focus on what you can actually control, maybe you tap into that part of the cosmos that simply works just because you're doing exactly what you can do. Right. Yes. And, and if you focus today on exactly what you need to do and what you can do, then maybe things will just fall into place naturally by laws of the universe. Uh, and it, and again, this is the sort of stuff where it gets, it gets to the point where people are going to point at me saying, what are you preaching the secret or something like that? I'm not. <laughs> and and, and the, the, the word that you used earlier to describe the feeling is exactly right. It's confidence, right? There's a certain confidence that comes about when you realize that maybe if I focus on what's important, then things will simply fall into place uh, where they can fall into place. Yes, exactly. And, and as you're speaking, I, I was thinking of, because you had mentioned Marcus really earlier, I was thinking of texts in Marcus and the meditations where he talks about that, right? So um, the Stoics and, and, and many and, and the ancient philosophers in general were, were keen observers of the, the natural world, but, but the world of plants and animals and insects. And so it was not lost upon them how admirably a hive of bees takes care of their home. You've got the worker bees and the drones and you've got, you know, the queen doing it. You know, they were sexist, so they they described it as the king bee, right? We learned that it's a queen bee. Um, But uh, each, each bee has its own role to play. Each bee has its own part contributing to the good of the whole. And this is a theme, as I discuss it in my, my Marcus Aurelius book, Marcus, you know, is, it repeats this refrain over and over again, right? If it doesn't harm the whole, then it's not going to be bad for any one of the parts. And so in our own lives, if we recognize that what's good for the whole community is because we're an organic part of that whole. If it's good for the whole, it is going to be good for us because we can't detach ourselves and live as isolated parts, dismembered parts, right? We can't thrive as human beings. That would be contrary to nature at all levels, right? So, yeah, exactly. So uh, if we focus on, as, just as you put it, on what matters, virtue and the things pertaining to virtue, right? Among the, uh, uh, within the things that are up to us, if we focus on making smart, wise, courageous, frugal, just, fair, temperate, self-controlled, moderate, generous decisions in our own lives, in dealing with our own relationships with family members, friends, coworkers, neighbors, you know, so associate, associates in the different groups that we, we move through in different circles of affiliation. If we focus on behaving as we ought to and focusing on making good choices ourselves in all of those contexts, good heavens, we are doing our part to support nature, just as the bees are. Mm. The bees are doing their part in their hive operate properly, right? And not just this hive of bees here, 
but all the hives of bees, wherever they are, and all the many different species of bees, and the millions of other species of insects, right? And so forth, right? They're all doing their part. So are the birds, right? And so again, the, the Stoics are such, such sharp observers of birds and bees and plants and animals and insects in the natural world, that that's what they mean when they mean living agreement with nature. Or as we would say it today, living sustainably, right? Not yeah. outstripping the abundance of resources that our planet provides. All of these different natural goods which sustain all of these different kinds of life, lives, not just human beings, not just my life, not just the members of my tribe, right, or my group or my city or my nation, right, but all human beings, and not just human beings, all primates, but not just primates, all mammals, but not just mammals, reptiles and fish and all of it, right? We need healthy oceans, right? And so coral reefs are having time of it these days and so forth and so on right so that this is this is i think what what the stoics have in mind when they talk about living agreement with nature all of these different species and ecosystems and kinds of plants and animals and insects and so forth um, each doing its part to contribute to the rational functioning of the whole biosphere <laughs>